Hey guys, it's Lorian. Guild Wars 2 has many different types of armor that you can get from crafting, trading post, merchant, gem store, karma, story progression, festivals, and events, just to name a few. These also fall into three weights light, medium, and heavy. So today we are going to talk about some of my favorite medium weight armor sets and exactly how you can earn them just by playing the game. No gems required. I love these sets because they not only look good together, of course, but they also have some cool and unique pieces that go well with other sets. And if you know anything about Fashion Wars, that is a big deal. Oh, and if at any point you think, hey, I want that, all links will be in the description below. Heads up though, be sure to watch out for spoilers that might be listed in the wiki pages if you haven't played through all the stories. Let's get started. First up are two sets that can be earned by fighting in dungeons. Dungeons are five player instances that can start unlocking at level 30 where you earn dungeon currency called Tales of Dungeon Delving. You can then purchase any armor pieces with this currency from Dungeon Masters located in Lion's Arch or with some lounge passes like Mistlock Sanctuary. If you have any Tyrian exchange vouchers from Black Lion Chests, you can also transfer them into Dungeon Currency. The third option is to complete the reward tracks in World v World or PvP to obtain the armor boxes. Nightmare Court I really love the fairy nature aspect of these pieces and probably why this is my favorite set from the dungeons. It even has some cool bioluminescent watercolor and gradient effects. Examples of fashion themes good for this armor are fake creatures, nature, or even animals. I even have some pieces on my char as a Lisa Frank theme. Who here remembers Lisa Frank? Nightmare Court is from the Twilight Arbor dungeon that is unlocked at level 50, explorable modes unlock at level 55 and 80 for the dungeon currency, and is in the upper left corner of Caledon Forest. A full set will cost you 1,380 tales of dungeon delving. Or you can earn this set through the Twilight Arbor World v World PvP reward tracks. Flame Legion Can we say Fiery Executioner? Seriously though, the leather and flames just go great together. And I love that it's not just a great big fireball, you know, where you can't see any details of the other pieces. The flames and embers are just enough without going overboard. This is also one of those armor sets where each individual piece would match well with many other armor sets. Examples of fashion themes for this one are fire elementals, mini bosses, BBEGs, pyromaniacs, pyrotechnics. The Flame Legion set is from the Citadel of Flame dungeon, unlocked at level 70, explorable mode at level 75 for the dungeon currency, and in the upper right corner of Fire Heart Rise. A full set will also cost you 1,380 tales of dungeon delving. Or you can earn this set through the Sorrows Embrace World v World and PvP reward tracks. What's your favorite dungeon set? Falconers. I absolutely love the tiered feathers on this armor set. The boots and gloves even have triangular tiered metal pieces to complement with a kind of a wing aspect. However, I'm not sure what's going on up here around the neck, spider web, or maybe they were trying for a bird's nest. Boo knows. Possible fashion themes for this include birds, Native Americans, or angels. Falconer's armor set is a level 60 cultural set that is only available to human tunes. You can either purchase it in Divinity's Reach from Jerifim, just a little northwest from the Minister's Waypoint, or get it a little cheaper in World v. World from the Script Trader. Emblazoned. I really like this set because it has multiple pieces that can work for some out-of-the-box themes. Examples include dragon snakes, lizards, stone, petrified, or if you just use the helmet, Shredder. Emblazoned Armor is a set that can be crafted by Leatherworker 400 or bought straight from the trading post. Buccaneer. I love a good pirate look, so I had a hard time deciding on either this one or the Privateer Armor, but in the end, I think this one has more armor pieces that are versatile. You can do pirate, of course, but also raider, viking, explorer, or outlaw. This one is a little tricky. The Buccaneer armor pieces can be bought from either Karma Merchants starting at level 60 with your tune or crafted with the Leather Worker level 425. You could purchase the Buccaneer helm with badges of honor from a World v World NPC, but they are currently unavailable. So the only way to obtain the helm is to craft it. And I found out during this research that the armor pieces are not called Buccaneer when buying with Karma or crafting. What the buck? even though that's what's listed on the armor page. I have never seen so many different names for an armor set. Um, Arena Net, can you fix this, please? Just a suggestion. Anyway, what you want to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom on the Buccaneer acquisition page where you will find the crafting names of the Buccaneer helm. The Dashing Tricorner. Mistwalker. 
I tried to pick various armor sets based on the ways to unlock them and decided on this one from World v World. This one has more of an outlaw mercenary look while still having multiple pieces that can be used for fashion, like Hunter or going more ritualistic with the bone shoulders. Also, Yankee Doodle! Miss Walker armor sets can be bought from the Unified Vendor System NPC in World v World using a combination of gold and badges of honor. Heritage the Heritage Armor sets are earned through playing Guild Wars 1 and obtaining 6 Hall of Monuments points, then linking your account to Guild Wars 2. You then use your Hall of Monuments Portal Stone or go to the Eye of the North in Guild Wars 2 and look into the Scrying Pool, choosing the instance option of Before Your Friends Were Here. Head back to the Scrying Pool area and talk to Kims the Historian to get your armor pieces. I absolutely love everything vintage or retro, so it's probably not a surprise to see this one on my list. I think ArenaNet did a wonderful job of staying current with this set while keeping just enough of the vintage style. You could go for a statelier fashion with these armor pieces, a sideshow or carnival theme, or more nature. If you have played or are currently playing Guild Wars 1 and haven't linked your Guild Wars 2, what are you doing? You're missing out on lots of achievements, armors, minis, pets, and titles. I have linked a Hall of Monuments Rewards Points calculator in the description. Just enter any of your Guild Wars 1 characters' names and it should tell you how many points and what rewards you have earned so far. If you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. It's truly appreciated and really helps the small channel. Now back to the content. Luminous. The Luminous armor to me is the perfect combination of hello, Behold my regalness, while I push you down this hill. You can be a king or queen in this armor and stay prepared for battle. It also just looks super comfortable. Possible themes to get from this set include nobility, 19th century attire, or a ringmaster. The Luminous set can be acquired from the Anniversary Armor Pack when one of your tunes reaches their 6th birthday. You can also receive this on your 7th and 8th birthdays as well, so you can collect all three weights of Light, Medium, and Heavy. So make sure not to delete any of your oldest characters. You can get some really nice armor pieces by just getting birthday presents, even if you don't play those tunes very much. Carapace this is probably my absolute favorite armor set so far, especially given the fact that my main tune is a ranger druid. I have used these pieces for fashion so many times I have lost count. Some of the pieces even have a gradient effect, which is always a nice touch in my book. Any fashion related to nature, fairies, butterflies, dragonflies, or mothman would work well with this armor. Carapace is an armor set that is earned from the latter half of the Story of Living World Season 2, or by completing the Silver Waste Reward Track and PvP in World v World. If obtaining the armor through the story, there are different story steps or enemies that are required to get the armor. There's also a luminescent version that can be earned as well. Bladed Bladed armor is earned through the Heart of Thorns expansion. Metas, story steps, and masteries are required for different pieces. You can also earn the armor pieces by completing the Heart of Thorns reward tracks in World v World and PvP. My, what big blades you have! All the better to cut the vines with, my dear. I do really like this armor set. Even at first glance, it looks a little harsh. However, sometimes the harshest looking sets can be used for the sharpest looks. See what I did there? Please don't unsubscribe. <laughs> Possible fashion ideas include Sky Pirates, Steampunk, or Science Fiction. Elonian. My favorite part about this set is that it all looks handmade. It literally looks like a skilled artisan worked very hard sewing and making every single piece. And then one day, while browsing at the marketplace, you find it placed on a shopkeeper's table and you just have to have it. Just make sure to keep an eye out for those desert raiders. You can, of course, use desert or sand as a fashion theme, but you could also make undead mythology or dystopian work. Elonian armor pieces can be earned from completing story steps in the Path of Fire expansion or by completing the Crystal Desert reward track in World v. World and PvP. Funerary Funerary is another set that is earned from the Path of Fire expansion, but this time through achievements. Once they're done, you can purchase additional weights from the Primeval Steward NPC in Desert Highlands. This set is another great throwback to Guild Wars 1. You can see this armor on the Primeval Sunspear Guards in the Tomb of the Primeval Kings. Fashion ideas include Nobility, Sorcerer, Flying Creatures, or Ronin. Let me know in the comments whether you like Elonian or Funerary better. Mist Shard Miss Shard armor is earned through achievements from the Living World Season 4 ending story War Eternal and from the map within Dragonfall. Additional pieces can be crafted using the recipes gained from the same achievements. 
To me, this combination of plant and dragon theme is nicely done. You get all the spikes and scales and puppy dog tails. Wait, what? Oh, sorry. I was totally thinking of something else. <clears throat> But if you go for the Blossoming Mist Shard upgrade, a crystal or gem theme can also work. Raven Ceremonial. This armor set only includes five pieces, as opposed to the normal six, and is a completely different set from the Raven armor pieces bought from the gem store, and has a possible chance to drop from Strike Missions or the Drakkar group event from Biora Marches. However, you can also buy them from the trading post if you don't want to grind around 120 gold at the time of this recording. An avian theme is pretty obvious with these pieces, but you could also try indigenous, folklore, Nordic, mascots, and puns are always a fun idea. Runic. This set has quickly become a favorite of mine. I don't know if it's the almost power button like symbol on the chess piece or what, but it not only has a nostalgic vibe, but also a futuristic feel for me as well. Possible themes include android, cyberpunk, enchantment, or yes, even runes. Runic armor sets can be bought from Burgild and Eye of the North by using a combination of gold and karma or strike mission currency and karma. Jade Tech. There are multiple themes coming from this set and I really love how they all mesh so well together. Asian culture, dragons, technology, cyberpunk, water, and apparently mystery and intrigue with the way this hat is so big that it hides everyone's face no matter what race you put it on. JTEC armor is acquired through crafting or the trading post. Recipes for crafting can be bought from the Zunlai Jade Sales Associate with research notes in the End of Dragons expansion. A level 400 leather worker is required. Monastery. Monastery is another set that it can either be crafted or purchased from the trading post. Recipes for crafting can be bought from Chinwa with ancient coins in Saitung Province in the End of Dragons expansion. The Monastery set is simple and relaxing. A nice change. I really wish there were more armor sets like this, especially for the medium weight. I'd be lying if I didn't say it also makes me want to learn some type of martial arts. Ideas for this armor include monk, thief, acrobat, gymnast, or the avatar. No, not the blue people. A huge thank you to my fashion community for taking the time and transmutation charges to model these medium sets for me. If you want me to make a video about the light and heavy armor sets, let me know in the comments below. Now go update your fashion.